need to think about the potential for long-term harm in relation to what's going on in Japan and what is going on uh, with the potential for those clouds to come over to the United States. Now, just taking a step back, the reason we're concerned is that the body has a gland called the thyroid gland. And that thyroid gland is located, it looks like a butterfly, and it sits over your neck. And that gland is important in producing hormones in the body, specifically thyroid hormone, thyroidine and thyroxine, T3, T4. These things are key hormones in the body, and they are master regulators of what goes on. And in order for the body to produce these thyroid hormones, the body, and specifically the thyroid gland, has to uptake iodine. Iodine is the critical component that is needed for the thyroid to form these hormones. Now, interestingly enough, we know that in the past, if people have a deficiency of iodine, they could actually get what is called a goiter. And we've seen these in the, in the history books and textbooks. And we know that if we don't get enough iodine, it can result in a goiter because the, the body gets charged up and and the thyroid gland specifically, tries to overcompensate. And so we started to see um, different foods, salts being um, uh, fortified with iodine or iodized salt. Now, the body, and specifically the thyroid, uses iodine, but it cannot distinguish between good or bad iodine. So what happens in a nuclear disaster is that we have a whole host of radioactive substances which are released into the air. And part of what is released is radioactive minerals. One of those minerals is radioactive iodine. And that iodine can then be taken up and is taken up by the thyroid gland. In fact, the thyroid is usually not 100% saturated with iodine. And because of that, there's room for this radioactive iodine to go into it. And what happens then is we have an epicenter, we have a, a, a nodule um, of radioactive material that then can not only itself cause, uh, cause a source for accumulation of radioactive uh, and radioactivity in the body, it also disrupts hormone production. So you're getting a, a double effect. Number one, you're getting radioactive material accumulate or be drawn into that thyroid gland because the thyroid uptakes iodine. And then secondly, not only do we have radioactive material in our body that leads to cancer and disruption, but we also have destruction of the thyroid gland, a master regulator of hormones. In fact, in the Chernobyl accident uh, over in Russia that uh, many of us are familiar with, there was about 50,000 delayed deaths that were attributed to specific thyroid-related cancers and development. So it's very, very important to note and very, very important to keep in mind that The thyroid gland accumulates iodine because that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to use iodine to create uh, hormones, master hormones that regulate the body, T3, T4, and the body cannot distinguish between good and bad or radioactive iodine. That radioactive iodine is carried in these dust clouds or in these radioactive clouds. There's radioactive material. These radioactive clouds then go um, and travel and wherever they end up or wherever who they are, who are, is ever exposed to the material that is within it may be exposed to radioactive iodine. In fact, in the United States, if you live within a certain distance of a nuclear reactor, the National uh, 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 Atomic Agency, and by law, the, the United States government provides all citizens of the United States who live within a certain area, and, and forgive me, I don't know the exact range, uh, you know, within five miles or so within a, 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 a nuclear reactor, are, they are supposed to provide citizens with high-dose potassium iodide that in the case of a nuclear fallout or disaster, that they are to immediately take this potassium iodide in high dose to saturate their thyroid with iodine so it doesn't have any room for radioactive iodine to come and take it up. So it's very, very important. What we can do and what we can do on a preventive side is really two strategies. Number one, on a daily basis, we should be supplementing and taking in at least 100% of the RDA of iodine. Know that the Aniva Vibe 
fruit sensation and the other vibes, but the vibe fruit sensation is my top recommendation for a whole host of reasons. But know that the vibe fruit sensation has 150 mil, uh, 150 micrograms, which is 100% of the RDA of iodine. Know that on a daily basis. It's important for individuals, especially now, to be taking in at least 100% of the RDA of iodine. Now, in the event of a nuclear disaster, fallout, or exposure, you're going to want to increase that. And that's where what Dr. Norm talked about, there's some exceptionally high-dose potassium iodide substances that you can have available um, that are, are very, very high in the milligram range, but you only take that. That product is very high dose, and you would only take that in the event of a nuclear exposure or disaster. Up until that point, so there's, there's, two, there's two parts to promoting the health of the thyroid. One is making sure we get enough iodine on a daily basis. Uh, that's really to, to help support hormonal levels and also to help support full saturation. And then we have, if you have a nuclear event, then you have to take a massively high dose, and that is to make sure that we maximize saturation. So the Univa Vibe uh, Nutraceutical has 100% of the RDA, and an individual could also then supplement with the Univa Thyroid Care Formula on top of that. So that product, in combination with the Vibe, is a one-two punch for thyroid care. One of the things that's very important is for individuals, should you be on a coast, should you be um, in an area that has a reactor or, or, or in a trade wind area where this is, is, is looking to go, it's very important to be have on hand um, a daily supplement that you're taking to, to take at least 100% of the RDA of iodine, and then also to have on hand that, that mega dose should it be needed. Um, now, in terms of what we're doing at Aniva, so we, we are increasing our production of our thyroid care formula, of our potassium iodide, so I recommend individuals take their Vibe, which has 100% of the daily RDA of iodine, of course, you take your, your omega-3 EFAs, take your Resvante, and then if you're in an area that has of concern, I would add on extra uh, thyroid care formula for a period of time here of, um, of a one, uh, one serving size per day. So that is my recommendation at this point, and, um, and, and know that the thyroid care formula has also some other synergistic minerals um, in the product to help support the health of the thyroid gland. We've had some wonderful, wonderful experience with individuals who've had thyroid challenges over the years with that product. But most important, again, take your vibe. It's got the iodine in it. You could also supplement with a little extra with the thyroid care formula um, on top of that. So we're, we're very, very uh, concerned. We're very, very um, uh, mindful of what's going on. Um, I think it's important that we're not alarmist, but that we're also aware um, and, and that we are prepared, and, and we are increasing our production of our thyroid care formula, and also investigating, we did offer uh, uh, post-9-11 uh, and some other things, we did offer that exceptionally high dose, and we're investigating um, uh, if we're able to obtain that material uh, again um, to, to offer that to the members, um, uh, and so we are working on that. But in the meanwhile, take your vibe, take your thyroid care formula, and of course, take your, your EFAs and Resvante, it's very, very important for us to stay aware and prepared and know that we'll have more information coming forward from Aniva.